Is there something you can comment on possible ideas? Like, so first of all, like, I mean, uh, uh, like you could use nuclear, so nuclear pulse propulsion. Yeah, so that's, I mean, you've probably heard of Project Orion, which um, was the I, Freeman Dyson uh, and, and some of his collaborators had a scheme to, um, to power a large space vehicle by detonating atomic bombs behind it. Um, and so one of the other people who was working at Blue Operations during this time was George Dyson, the son of Freeman. And so we knew all about Project Orion. And he found an old film that they'd shot on a beach in La Jolla of a prototype of this that was powered by uh, like uh, lumps of C4. So that was an idea, but for a private company, obtaining a large number of atomic bombs was probably out of scope. So it was more of a theoretical thing. There's a conceptually similar approach using lasers that uh, that Freeman worked on with Arthur Kantrowitz and some others, where you take a pulsed laser and you fire it at a vehicle that has a block of ice on the back. And the pulse hits the uh, ice and flashes off a layer of steam that becomes plasma. And plasma is opaque because it conducts. And so being opaque, it then absorbs all of the energy from the laser pulse and gets really hot and just pushes on the, the back of the, the block of ice. And then you wait a moment for that to dissipate and then you do it again. So it would just kind of uh, vibrate its way. Like it sounds really violent, but Freeman said that if you were wearing like rubber soled tennis shoes standing in this vehicle, you would just feel a mild vibration. Um, so there your source of energy is on the ground and you're getting higher specific impulse than you could get by burning chemicals. Um, Jordan Kerr and others worked on another laser system, uh, the late Dr. Jordan Kerr, um, that just would heat up a heat exchanger by converging, many converging solid state lasers from the ground. And Kevin Parkin um, works on a similar scheme that just uses uh, microwaves uh, to do that. Uh, we looked at um, tall towers, uh, I spent a while looking kind of semi-seriously at giant bullwhips. Um, What's a bullwhip? Just a whip. Just a, you have them here in Texas, right? It's, yeah, I, just, I, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but how does that have to do with propulsion? If you think about it, a whip is an incredibly simple primitive object mm -hmm. that can break the speed of sound. So it's unbelievable in a way that for thousands of years, people with no technology have been able to, to accelerate objects through the speed of sound mm -hmm. just through an architectural trick. Just, just, you know, just the physics of a moving bend of material in a medium mm -hmm. um, can do this. So, um, so that's the thing I still think about from time to time. You can use the same physics to make freestanding loops of chain or or other flexible materials um, that just kind of stand up under their own physics. Um, I mean, it's kind of awesome to imagine. So you imagine using the same kind of physics of a whip, but have at the end of it, a spaceship. Yeah, that would detach at the moment of maximum velocity. Why? Why not? <laughs> Why wouldn't that? So part of my motivation in studying that was to ask that that question. Yeah. It was it was more uh, almost a symbolic way of saying, look, there's all kinds of physics we haven't explored yet. Um, that's it's no more crazy than the idea of chemical rockets. Um, it's just that uh, more money's gone into chemical rockets, right? <laughs>